The Shen Yu clan is burning, and people are dead. A boy named Luo Ying is fighting with three men. One of them said he already killed all his brothers and masters, and he won't be able to take them down, so he could kill himself. But he throws a flying knife. But he counters his attack with his knife and tells the other two to get rid of him. Both use their superpowers, and a big rock hand appeared around the boy. But he flew upside and returned their attack, and broke their spell. The main one said he had finally found him. A female master appeared and helped him with powerful stoke. Two men fell. The main man said their brothers from Xi Lui clan wouldn't let him get away. Ying asked his master why she come back. She replied that she should still have Lion Shang pills with her. But Ying said she should not come back because of the Xi clan. The man said how they both go to hell, and they are not going to get away with him. Ying shouted, but the master stopped him as he was badly wounded. The man asked who he was. He replied that he plied his emo and would avenge his annihilated clan. The other master said he would not live tomorrow, and it all happened because his master refused to marry his lord. Ying attacked, but the master attack was more powerful. He will be killed when his master comes before him and saves him using transporting charm. And they said to Ying that he must keep on living without her, and he said goodbye. The boy shouted. The boy opens his eyes full of tears while sitting in class. He is shocked. Where is he? One hour ago, at Ninghai University on Earth, students talked about a boy who is the Yi family's useless son and was born impotent. The boy introduced himself as Yi Mo Yi family third generation descendant, and not long ago, he was still a young master whom everybody had to please. Yi family is one of Huexia's five biggest families. The bigger family more care about its reputation. Two years ago, when his father died, he was kicked out of his family because a DNA test revealed he was not his father's breed. And because of that, he is in such a state. He came to class, and students started mocking him. He bumped into a boy and said his trash. Yimo thinks everything has changed. He was told in physical examination that he was impotent, and this news spread like wildfire, and now everyone so gracious towards him was ready to step on him. A boy and girl enter class, and the girl is shocked to see Yimo. She said she was only with him because he is from Yi family, and now he is kicked out and impotent. The boy said now she is his girlfriend. Yimo replied that he didn't care. He could get all the women he wanted. Then he went to a girl named Yan, gave her a letter, and asked her to read it when free. All are surprised as all boys chasing Yan and Yimo do not even know his worth. Yan opened the letter and went to the front desk. She reads it loudly. It's a love letter and mocks him. The whole class starts to make fun of him. Yimo wishes for death. A girl asked if he was okay. He remembers his master said goodbye. He opened his eyes and was shocked. Where is he? Yimo thinks spells of the Xi clan hit him and his master, and he wonders who these people are and where his master goes. He tries to use his virtual energy but won't be able to do it, and he sees that all his cultivation is gone. All class laughed at him. The class teacher arrived, and Yimo was leaving. The class teacher asked him where he was going, but he did not reply. He is thinking about what this place is. He looked outside. It does not look like Liu Yu mainland. He feels he has reincarnated into another world. Sitting on the bench, he thought that transportation charm sent him here. He doesn't remember what happened to Master after that. Then he thought it was useless as all his cultivation was gone, and he didn't do anything even though he knew. Two boys passing by made fun of him about the earlier accident in class and called him Limp Dick. Then he knows his name in the world and slowly remembers the memories of this world. He goes to the bathroom and sees if he is impotent and wishes, in this case, he rather not be reincarnated. He is limp dick, but luckily, it's not real, just a pseudo limp dick. He has seen such cases before in the Shen Yao clan. The cure for this is in Leo Yu mainland. He just needs to achieve the third level of energy cultivation, free his blocked meridians, and heal automatically. But in this world, it's tough to achieve that energy level, and if he can't, he is just a limp dick, and die old just in this impotent body. He sadly walked in a corridor when a girl named Wang Ying bumped into him. She was shocked to see him. Emo asked if she knew him. The girl shouted that she had lent him money and now he was pretending not to know her. Emo remembers her name, and she is this school student. He sometimes lends his money after he is kicked out of his family. Upon asking if he was okay, he said his brain was fuzzy so he didn't recognize her. She girl consoled him about the class incident and told him Yan was not a good girl. He thinks only his master is beautiful in his eyes and that girl is trash. The girl asked what he was saying. But he said he had some stuff to do as his stomach growled, and he remembered this muggle body needed food to stay alive. He finds three coins in his pocket. Wang took her to Korean BBQ for lunch. Yo thinks he is miserable because he depends on others for food. And he remembers Wang as her sister and Yi Ling's classmate. 
and their families have some business dealings. And also, Wang is though careless person but has a good heart. He remembers that his mother died after he was born, and he had one brother and sister from another mother, and they were not close to each other before his father died. He remembers his sister hated her. He is sure the DNA report is altered. He thinks that even in this world, people are cold and impersonal, and Wang is one of the two or three people who don't cut him off. The food is served. They started eating when Wang asked if he heard about the Oning Kinksu. He asked why she was. Wang said, surprised, and told him, it's your fiancé. He was shocked and remembered her. Wang told him last week that Ning called off the engagement. But three days later, Kinksu came out and announced that she would marry no one else but you. Yimo is surprised he is popular. Wang said he didn't need to flatter. This was all because the Song family asked Kinksu to marry the Song Xiaowen. The Song family is the strongest among the five families, and its influence and power grow so much that even government is scared. But Xiaowen had a very bad reputation and opposed a song that meant death. That is why the Ning family used his marriage contract to drag the Yi family to use its power and influence. And their news is aired on television. Kingsu said her family is credible, so she only married him due to the contract. Yimo thinks money is a big problem than this. Wang gave him an envelope full of cash and told him his brother Yi Zifeng sent him this money, and he remembered he was nice. Then the left restaurant, Wang, told him he was different today. He said he just turned over a new leaf and thanked her for a meal. He feels the spiritual energies, and now he must break the third level of energy cultivation. So someday, he will be able to see his master again. Two girls were walking on the road. One girl said that a ghost of a man who killed himself in the woods appeared on this road at night. Suddenly something passed by both girls got scared and ran away. Yimo was standing on the pole. He was practicing the cloud shadow step and broke through the first level of energy cultivation. It's been two months since he came into this world, and the two months hard work paid off. He entered the energy cultivation stage recently but needs to find a way to get items with higher spiritual energies. The next day, he asked Wang for more money. She could not believe he had spent all those money in just two months. Wang scolded him and advised him to work to earn money. He thinking about how he can make money fast when a girl gives him a flyer of a fortune master who changes luck with a charm. 5,000 yuan for a piece of luck changing charm. Yimo went to that place, there were a couple of buying charms. Wang inquired them, and they told him they get charmed at the Feng Shui Pavilion, and this master knew everything going on in their family. Wang can't believe this yellow paper is selling at 5,000. He pulled out a real charm from his pocket. He told them he had a real one here, 20,000 per piece. But they called him crazy and went off. He sees a man in a black Audi. Then he went inside, but the manager told him his master was busy so that he could come some other time. The master assistant told him Miss Su Jingwen's appointment was cancelled last minute. Then they called Yimo to come, and he has offered him tea. He told the master he was having bad luck with money, so he needed to fix this luck. Master replied he had an air of poverty between his bones, so that it would be tricky. Master told him he had some charm that could turn his fortune. The master diminished his lifespan to cultivate these charms, so he only gives someone brought to him by fate. He said today was a day of great luck, and to turn his luck around, he would gift him a piece of charm for just 5,000. If he finds that expensive, it's not fate that brought you here. Emo said he misunderstood how such a precious charm is just 5,000. Master asked then what he thought it was worth. He said 50,000. Master was shocked and appreciated him. Wang said the purchase of only one piece is not acceptable. His manager brought many charms on a plate. Master is so happy to sell all those and asked if he could pay with a credit card or check. Emo said he got it wrong he had 8 charms to sell and Master had to pay money for him. Master got furious and called his men to get him out, and they shouted that he wanted to ruin his business. A man breaks the wall and comes inside. Three boys came, and the Master called one Master Zhang and told this rascal to come to ruin their business. Emo admires him as he hires a professional man. Zhang ordered his man to attack him. Emo punches one of his men. Emo beats both boys, and Zhang is shocked. The big man holds Emo from his backside and threat to kill him. Emo said he didn't know his place and provoked an opponent stronger than him. He punched him quickly. He fell backside off the table. Zheng trembles and give up. He called Emo master and requested to have a nice conversation. Zheng suddenly took out a knife and tried to hit Emo with a knife, but he easily stopped the knife with his two fingers. Zheng was frighted and said he was wrong and apologized. Emo kicks him with power. The master gets shocked and frightened and tries to escape, but Emo catches him then begs for mercy, and says he is only hired to do work. 
Emo asked about customers' personal information from a family of power and influence. Master told him about the mayor's daughter. Emo asked for her information. Master swiftly goes and brings her data. Emo is surprised to see the profile of Su Jinwen and wonders why she is there. Master told him that Mayor's wife slipped into a vegetative state after a car accident a few years ago. Her daughter is trying to find a way to wake her up. That is what landed her with Zhang Wenqiao, and continued that he didn't want to do all this, but Zhang forced him. Emo said he borrowed his information and kicked his face. He fell and went unconscious. Emo is happy as his charms have found their market. A red car is moving while a girl with pink hair calms her to not think about something as it is a happy day. And this may be just the same type of sports car. Emo is standing on the roof of the building in front of Shixi Hospital. A woman is lying on the bed in a coma. At the same time, her daughter is standing next to her bed. The boy named Wang Peng told Jin when she didn't need to worry. He had contacted a specialist in France. Very soon, they would transfer her mother there. She replied that she took her mother to all kinds of hospitals, and he has already introduced five or six doctors. She heard the voice from outside. Someone was selling charms for possession, in a veggie state, and poor health. Jingwen asked who was outside. Yimo is outside selling those charms. Wang Peng is irritated that the guy is setting up his stall in the hospital. He said he would go and ask him to get lost, but Jingwen went to him and asked if his charms cure a person who is in a vegetative state. He bet that reawakening charm does that, and show her two charms, a superior one for 20,000 and a normal one for 10,000. Wang Peng offended that 20,000 for rotten paper. He said he would get someone here as how dare he swindle people. Emo pulled his arms, and she didn't ask him to buy those, so he should not get on his road to fortune and throw him on the floor. Jinwen told Peng to stop and give Emo 50,000 for charms and took all. Peng stops him, but she won't listen. Yimo gives her an extra charm for protection as she gave 50,000. He guides her when she uses charms. She must throw them at a person and shout, descend. Jingwen surprised. Peng inquired if she was seriously using that charm. He said that guy is a swindler money is a small matter, but it is something that happened to your mom. But Jingwen said it does not matter if it saves her mother, she will try it. Then she threw a charm and said descend. The charm got bigger and started glowing. Peng is also mesmerized by this magical stuff. Jingwen looked at her mother, but she did not wake up. She is disappointed as it does not work. But slowly, her mother opened her eyes and woke up. Peng could not believe this. Jigwen hugged her mother as she was finally awake. Emo is happy to earn 50,000, not as much as imagined, but enough to keep going for a while. Suddenly a bright light flashes in his eyes and police are there to arrest him. Emo was shocked at what the matter was. Police said he was suspected of international injury and was coming with them. He got nervous. They handcuff him and take him to the station in the car. He shocked to see Z is sitting in the car. He is worried about seeing him there. The next morning, Jingwen asks Peng that the guy she is looking for has been caught by him. Peng replies that he has data on a boy that matches her last night's description. Jingwen said to bring him to her. Emo, in interrogation, thinks about what to do. Jingwen comes to meet him. Emo is surprised at what she is doing there. He worries that his charms may not work, but that is impossible. Then he thought maybe that doesn't work in this world, making him a quack. Jingwen asked the chief what Emo had committed. Chief told her he was suspected of international injury, but the party was a bunch of hooligans, so it could be self-defense. Then Jingwen bails him out. Emo sighed in relief as she was here to bail him out. Emo thanked her, but she said she was the one who should thank him. As because of his charms, her mother wake up and called him master. Emo said he was now just a student, not a master, and showed her his student card. She said he looked like a friend of hers and gave him her card and said if those people ever get you to give her a call. Emo was sitting in class when Chizu asked if he had moved out because he had not seen him in some and asked if this was because of Yan Yan. Emo replied why would he lower his level for a petty woman. The other boy agreed with him. Yan came from behind and said who is he to say she was petty and how dare he show up in this classroom. Shizu took Yimo's side, and Yan misbehaved with him. Then Jinwen came. Yan and Zhu are surprised to see her. She asked Yimo to give her company if he was free. Yimo shocked. They both went away, and Zhu thought Yimo had luck with ladies. Yan got furious. Jinwen invites him to her birthday party. The next day Yimo went to the address and wrote on the birthday invite. Yimo thinks owning someone's favor is a pain, and now he got to mingle with these muggles. The place is astonishing. The boy Zhao Hong asked, who let him in and mocked his appearance. Yimo wonders who he is. A girl named Little Mei and a boy named Wang Zhu warn him not to misbehave with others. Hong is surprised to see them. Zhu warned him not to offend as his sister Jingwen personally invited him. 
Pong is shocked that he is Yimo. Zhu welcomed him. They both greeted him. When they handshake, Yimo feels he is trying to figure out his level. Yimo lay his hand fractured. Zhu was shocked. His hand fractured just like that. He apologized for gripping his hand so hard. May asked if she could call an ambulance. Yimo replied that there was no need for an ambulance. He blows his hand, and his hand is healed. He said he was just joking. Both siblings were shocked, and said he got some interesting skills. Jengwen arrived. Mai said she looked breathtaking today. Jigwen will introduce Yimo to everyone. Utsu says there is no need. They already know each other. Pong told Jingwen that he prepared a present for this birthday party. Pong shows her an agate pendant that he brought back from England. He hoped that she liked his gift. Mai also gave her the gift of a limited edition of the perfume channel. Yimo also bought her a gift, a bracelet. Pong laughed and mocked him for the gift. Bu Jengwen liked that bracelet and thanked him, and asked the name of the bracelet. He replied that it was six luck for peace. Then Mei said to Jengwen to put the crappy bracelet aside and decide with whom she is doing her first dance. Hong said it was with him, of course. Mai shouted at him. Jingwen looked at Yimo and held his hand. Both Hong and Zhu were confused and shocked. Yimo and Jingwen start dancing. Yimo says he is not good at dancing. Jigwen replied that she would teach him. Both boys got don't like this. Mei said to Zaya's sister that Jingwen is a little different. Jingwen said to Yimo that he is a fast learner. After the dance, Yimo is leaving and thinking how muggles have boring parties when Jingwen calls his name and asks he is leaving already. Yimo replies that he has some stuff to do. Jigwen thanked him and said she was very happy today. Yimo is leaving when he hears two boys talking about Ning Kingsu. They talked to Kingsu in Ninghai, thought she would come to this party, and wanted a good look at her. Yimo wonders why she is suddenly here. He met Kingdux on his way. She said she had been waiting for him long enough. Yimo asked what brought her here. Song Xiaowen kept sending his people to Ning's family. Her family thought there was only one way left. Kingdux said she came to marry him. Yimo asked why she wanted to marry him. Yimo took her to his room and asked what exactly did she mean. She said she wanted a marriage certificate as soon as possible. Yimo asked why. Kingdux thinks she never imagined her level sinking so low that she had to beg a man to marry her, and remembers his family told her to get a marriage certificate, even though they are husband and wife on paper. However, the Song family will still take the Yi family's pride into account and dare not touch her. And then, at a suitable time, they got divorced later. It will harm her reputation, but it's still better ravaged by the hands of Song Xiaowen. And Yimo is impotent, so he will not do something. Yimo said he was asking her something then she came to reality, and hoped he didn't ask about the specific reasons. Yimo already knew the reason, so he asked what he got from doing this. Kingux rewards him with a credit card with 500,000 in it. Yimo thought this money would be a great help to his future cultivation. Then he agreed his money and a free wife were a great deal. But he makes her clear what she wants to do she has to do by herself. Kingux thinks of him as a frivolous man. Then he went outside and said to Kingux she could use his bed. He slept somewhere else. He went to the roof of the building and cooked. Kingux shouted that his pillow and blanket stunk. Yimo finds her annoying. He added silver heart herb to the pot that he spent months cultivating. Yimo needs it to enter the second level of energy cultivation. He pours in a bowl and drinks it, it tastes bitter. He feels warm in his hands. Then he meditates as it speed up absorption of the herb's effect. But he spits out, he forgets that he is now in the body of a muffle, and this body couldn't handle the potency of this herb at once. Now he needs to find ways to neutralize it slowly. He made breakfast for Kingux in the morning, but she was not up yet. Kingux is sleeping, Yimo comes to see her. It looks like she was kept up all night. Then he left sleeping and went to ATM, but he was shocked to see the available balance was zero. He thinks it may be a credit card with frozen funds. He got furious and went to his room to ask her. But she is still sleeping. She seems to have a bad dream as she has tears in her eyes. When Yimo is making breakfast, Kingux asks when he will return. He replies that she had a bad dream and asks her to wash her face so they have breakfast. Kingux felt bad that he peeped at her while she was sleeping, warned him not to do this again, and ran away. They are having breakfast. Kingux is impressed by its delicious taste. She said it's hard to believe a pampered son like him cooks with such good taste. Yimo said to eat more if it tastes good. Kingux thinks he is okay, as rumors. Yimo thanks her for keeping her company before he achieves his energy level, and will soon leave this city. The news of their marriage is on news channels. When Kingux and Yimo exited their car after marriage, reporters were there to take their interviews. After that, Yimo comes home, thinking it has been 20 days since they both lived together, and it seems Kingux is slowly getting used to living here. News of their marriage spreads all over Beijing and he expects some moves from Song's family, but they are surprisingly quiet. 
but he said forget about the songs and the main problems he was facing when a boy suddenly called him and told him he got a package. Emo worried as the first problem was that he married a big spender and his merged savings again dried up. The second problem is that medicine is so powerful, which makes him must make oodle eating once every day. And the only way to handle this problem is to donate his blood to the hospital daily. Money could be better, but it is money. The boys from Charm Place go with a black bag on their shoulders. Emo wonder what they are doing. They put something strange in the car. Emo followed them to see what they were up to. Emo followed them with his power and was happy to see his power have been polished up so much. It seems they went to the third floor. Emo followed them. The boys open the bag. There is a woman in the bag. The girl is an English professor from Emo University, Yun Bing. Yimo wonders what Zheng wants with her. Zheng is lusting for her and opens her shirt in his zip while the other boy starts recording them. He said that with this, she would do as they bid in the future. Yimo said their methods truly are increasingly despicable. When the boy looks back, he punches his face and throws him against the wall. Another boy shouted about how he hurt Master Zheng. Yimo looked at him when Zheng shot and told the boy to use the dragon fist to thrash Yimo. But he ran away. Emo checked on the professor. She just passed out from the roofie. Zheng was disappointed in his friend and repented to keeping those around for nothing as they ran away when he needed them and shouted at Emo that if he laid another finger on him, he would do his entire family. Emo mind played him. Zheng felt his head hurt. He asked Emo what he would do. Emo replied. He sent him to a place perfect for an asshole like him. Zheng begs to stop him, but he won't. The next day the news of Zheng and his friend aired on TV that two mentally ill individuals were seen in a certain district, and these two were exhibiting unusual behavior, and he has called for their family to take responsibility to prevent further public disturbance. Kinksu is watching the news and thinks much weird stuff is happening in the city. Yimo came home and said he bought a chicken, and they could stew for dinner today. Kinksu asked for $200. Yimo asked what kind of wife comes extorting money the moment her husband gets home. Kinksu replied that she was in a hurry to leave the house, which was why she did not bring enough money, and he had $500. Then why is he not giving her such a paltry sum? Men are supposed to be generous. Yimo thinks the reply is that because the ATM card you gave me turned out the guess, she does not know that her card had been frozen. Then he gave her money and asked them if it was worth the care as he earned it with sweat and blood. Then he went to the kitchen to make dinner. Kinksu got furious because she thought he was using her money. She got the message that the Song family did not give any reaction. All the immigrant matters were settled, and her family could leave the country the next week. That means this fake marriage party is in the final stretch. Xiaowen is in his luxury car, talking to someone who tries to convince him that their hands are tied. Considering the small size of their family, they can go up against the Yi family. But he said he knew what news was up to that family immigration papers were done. Xiaowen warns him that if this business is not wrapped up by tomorrow, believe it or not, he will burn his new family down to ashes. Then he asked his driver to start the car and go to Ninghai, where he wanted to check in on Kingsu. Yimo is sitting on the roof, practicing his virtual energies. After a week, even though his spiritual Kai has been rising daily, he still only manages to break through. Yimo is worried that maybe the world is unsuitable for cultivation and why breaking into the second stage is so difficult. Suddenly light flashes, and Yimo's divine consciousness expands. He has finally broken through to the second stage of training Kai. He thinks it's time to leave this city. Yimo now needs to find a stronger spiritual spring. In the morning, Yimo makes breakfast for Kinksu and cleans the house. Kinksu woke up and told Yimo she was leaving tomorrow, their deal was terminated, and her people would manage their divorce. Yimo replied is that so. Kinksu goes back to the room and slams the door. Yimo wonders what he said wrong that she is throwing a tantrum. Kinksu is angry as, after being together for so long, he does not manage a proper farewell. At the end of the day, he only does it for money, and she thinks he might not be so bad. Yimo went to the roof at night to cook his medicine. He realizes he is missing a secret jar for these medicinal herbs when he gets on the roof. A car has arrived Yimo wonders who is making noise in the middle of the night. Xiaowen arrived at Yimo's residence with his friends. He wants to see Yimo. His friend asked Xiaowen what he would do with Yimo and Kingsu. He replied that he would beat Yimo and screw that bitch in in front of him. Yimo came outside and said he heard you guys looking for me. Xiaowen asked his men named Wang and Offa to break his legs. They both come to beat him. Yimo analyzes that they are not like those street runners. They are built like a brick, and their reflexes are pretty quick. One boy is going to hit me, but in Yimo's eyes, they are practically moving at the ant's pace. His strike goes empty, and Yimo disappears. They were shocked at where he had gone. Xiaowen shouted he is at behind their back. 
Emo punches on his back, and it collapses. He punched the other in his face and smashed against the wall. Shaowen seems terrified. Shaowen feels Emo is not human. He jumps very high in seconds. Emo's speed and strength now differ from when he was in the first stage, just as expected of the second stage of training Kai. His divine consciousness can now perfectly predict their every movement. He is slowly getting back his cultivation game. Shaowen regrets not bringing a weapon for self-defense and running away. Emo punched in the face and he fell. He was trembling with fear and told Emo not to come close to him and that he was a member of the Song family. Emo replies that Song's family is trash to him and that he is the trash of trash. Emo will kill him when Wang stops him and begs not to hit Xiaowen and makes a deal that he will let Xiaowen off, and they will give him as much money as he wants. Emo liked the idea then he asked her they got there by car. Xiaowen replied yes. Emo asked all of them to get in the car. Wang asked him where he wanted to go in the middle of the night and if they were going for cash, then banks would be closed. Emo replied Gillen. Wang was shocked and told him Gillen was a thousand kilometers from there. Xiaowen scolded Wang to cut the crap and do what Emo told him. Then he talks to Emo and tells him his position. If something happens to him, there is no place he can hide. Emo said he would toss him out of the window if he said another word. Xiaowen said he was just discussing things. When they reached the road track of Gillen, Wang asked why they were there. Emo said they were heading toward hell. Xiaowen panicked and asked what is he saying. They already agreed that they pay him off. Emo replied with an evil smile that he was merely being considerate by picking someplace more scenic. Xiaowen shouted what the hell did he want. Emo puts his two fingers on the neck of Xiaowen and Wang, and they both get paralyzed. Emo jumps from the car. Their car fell from the track into the forest and burned down. Kinks who wakes up in the morning and sees Emo is not there or makes breakfast. She disappointed. Kinks who got a call from Lai Mume. She gave her the news of the death of Xiaowen. She could not believe it. But then Mai sent her the link to the news where the details of their accident were shared. Kinks who a sigh of relief as now the Song family was busy investigating the sudden death of Xiaowen. Then Kinks who ordered food, but it tasted bad. She remembered Emo cooking. Kinks who thinks why he was away since it was noon. He has always been on time. She wonders where he goes to sleep every night and wants to know. She went to the surveillance room there was no one. She started watching footage from this past month to see what Emo had been up to every night. He was on the roof. Kinks who wondered why he had been seeping roof and if there had to be a problem with his brain. Then she saw where he had gone yesterday night. She saw Song with his boys, and Emo was fighting them and took them in the car somewhere. And after they got into an accident, she worried about Emo. The guard came to delete the footage instantly and ran away. Niu Mei came in the car to take King Zhu. She was done packing when she asked Mei about Xiaowen and his friends dying in the car. Is there someone else in the car with them? Mei replied that only three people were in the car, and forensics cleared their identities. Then she asked about Emo and how they used him, and now they should compensate him. King Su replied no need. She had already given him 500,000. Mei was surprised. Where did she get that much money from? King Su reminded her that card she gave him had 500,000. Mei said, embarrassed that the card was useless. It's frozen since she left Yanjing, and she forgot to tell her. Kinksu is shocked to hear this because she is using all the emo money, and that's why he does not particularly is not generous. Then she reminded me that slips of blood donation he made to make money, and she always thought he was active money, grubber and always mocking him. But it turns out that she is a blind idiot. She felt so ashamed and sad and started crying. Emo is heading towards a small town using the cloud shadow step and, after reaching there, figures out what to do. Emo reached the whooping and started to look around. He was surprised to see such a large bus terminal in a small town, but he couldn't take the bus because there would be a problem if someone asked for identification. There would be a problem. A bus driver asks him if he needs a ride Emo asks about the destination. He told Kai City for only 55 yuan. Emo guesses it's probably an illegal taxi service because the fare is too low. Going from Gillen to the border via an illegal taxi service is a good option. The driver asked what he thought they could set off now if he were going. Emo relaxed and the car is using the cloud shadow step OS way too tiring. Then a girl hops on the bus. Passengers start passing comments on her. They pass through the Gixeng Dailing. The girl asked the driver to drop her off. The driver told her this was an untouched mountain range and their O sign of civilization in this area. Emo also thought travel by foot through the mountains and train was better. He also asked River to get Ho off too. The driver agreed and said if anything happens, don't come looking for me. A bus stopped, and a girl walked out of it. The guy followed her and left the bus. The bus driver said that these two hooligans looked like troublemakers. Emo was passing and said he didn't think the bus driver would catch on. 
The man called out to the woman and showed her a knife. Emo saw this, and another guy noticed Emo and said he should leave his money, and they would pass it on to his body. Emo said that they carried on with their activity as he was leaving. The woman called Emo to lend her a hand, but Emo wasn't interested in fighting. The other two guys were pissed at not noticing them. The woman immediately snatched the knife, killed the man with it, and said she wasn't asking for fighting. Rather, she called him to help her bury the two bodies. Emo said that the woman was both fast and ruthless, and if not for his second age of training Kai, he wouldn't have caught the many movements she made in those few seconds. The woman turned to Emo and called him. Emo said he had some actual business to do, but he shouldn't offend this person lest they make things difficult. The woman threw the knife away and said that he shouldn't be afraid, rather, he should help her drag the bodies into the forest, and the cash on these bodies would be his. Emo said what if they didn't have any money? The woman offered him her own money. He agreed and dragged the bodies into the forest. He suggested they burn them before burying them so they might not get in trouble. The corpses looked humanoid. He thought his fireball technique would have reduced if he hadn't gotten the third stage of training Kai. He noticed the woman was still waiting for him, but he didn't owe her anything since the corpses were burned. He tried to head off, but the woman followed him. Emo said he did whatever she asked and was not afraid of her since she would not kill him. She said that she wanted to discuss something with him. He stopped and asked what it was. The woman introduced her as Wen Dong and said she wanted to make a deal with him and befriend him. Emo asked about the payment. The girls said a car was in the mountain, and they had to drive it 20 miles north to deliver a parcel. After that, she will pay him 50,000. Yemo agreed as the task was easy with good payment. The woman thought that the boy's physique was not half bad. No wonder he was unfazed after seeing her killing the guys. They both got into the car. Yemo asked if they would be covering the remaining distance by car. Wen said they would prefer the car even if their target is closed. Yemo noticed that the woman was secretive and decided to use his divine consciousness. The divine consciousness can register objects within a 3.5 kilometers radius of one's surroundings. Yemo noticed two boxes in the car, each holding a gun and a model. Wen told him they would go into a room where they would be observed from above, but he just had to deliver the boxes. She told him to sit tightly in the car and drove fast. She decided to floor the car on a dangerous turn so the boy might get scared. But she noticed that her palms were sweaty and it was becoming difficult to drive. She bragged that the boy was scared, but he could trust her driving skills. Yemo said that she is driving slowly, and it will be time-consuming if she continues to drive at the turtle's pace. Wen said that safety is her number one priority. A girl named King Zhu was waiting for Yemo when the door rattled. A girl appears to ask why she has yet to pack her luggage as they should be heading to Yuzhu. King was shocked to hear that two days had already passed. King told Mumei that she wanted to procure the apartment she was living in for now, irrespective of the cost. Mumei was astonished as to why anyone would like to buy this apartment. King told her that she felt like she had lost something here, so if she procured this apartment, she would have the chance to recover that thing someday. But if not, she might never get that back. She began to cry. Mumei didn't want her to cry, and then she noticed some approaching footsteps. A girl entered her apartment, and the door was open, so she came in. Mumei recognized her and asked her to come. Miss Su Jing Wen asked them about Emo. King told her that Emo had left without saying a word. Jing was shocked to hear this. Mumei seemed irritated by the situation and said that Emo was just vindictive, and Emo leaving without saying a word had made King worried. Jing thought about his sudden disappearance and worried that the rumors about him were true. The two students noticed her and whispered about Emo, that he was all over Yun Bing and was scolded and beaten by her. Jing stooped them from spreading rumors about him. The student replied that to check the credibility of the rumors, she should contact teacher Yun Bing. Besides, they had seen him about to be beaten by her, but Emo held her hand, and she said that Emo was a pervert. Miss Jing thought she was refusing to believe the rumors, but why would a teacher accuse her student of a crime without reason unless Emo was that kind of a person? Jing sought him out initially, but he had yet to approach her, even when he had her number. She decided to head over to his place and sort out the things. King told Miss Jing Wen that although she and Emo were married for the show, she was indebted to him and requested the bracelet Emo had gifted her on her birthday. Can she give it to her? Miss Jing Wen remembered students calling him a pervert and finally decided to return the bracelet to its rightful owner. She said that she would give half of the bracelet to her and gave her three pearls of the bracelet, and then moved to leave the apartment. She wanted to give some message to Emo but couldn't and said goodbye to her. Emo and Wen were in the car to deliver the parcel. When they reached, Wen asked him to rake out the small box and leave the larger one to her. 
Emo put on his glasses. We thought he might fear another vengeance's wrath, but wearing shades was a good idea. She asked Emo to follow her every order. Master Gong in the building said Miss Wen had left Bei Sha, but she was no less daring and had been awaited there. She offered her a cup of tea, but she refused and said that once the transaction was done, she would leave and wanted to wash off her hands from them in the future. Emo noticed that the older man was smiling but seemed cruel and crafty. He used his divine consciousness to check things out. He realized that two guys were behind the screen, two by the door and in the corner. There were four guns in the room. The screen was designed so that someone could hide in there, as the bottom part of the screen was hollow. Emo thought the cost of today's work would outweigh the benefits if he hadn't had his divine consciousness. The older man wanted to see the goods first. Miss Wen agreed and told Emo that more people were in the back. The older man laughed and said that although Miss Wen is talented, he could kill her many times when she assembles the gun, so keeping her cool is better. Wen said that Mr. Gong had armed men waiting, so he might want to return to his words. The older man said that following the Hood's code of honor no longer proves lubricative today and called two armed men by clapping. Yimo realized that the men behind the screen were still hiding, and he had yet to reach the third stage of training Kai, so he wasn't sure if he could avoid bullets. Miss Wen said that if Mr. Gong isn't going to follow the code of honor, she is not supposed to take everyone out along with herself and take out a bomb. The older man quickly ordered to put down the guns to his men. They did what they were commanded. Miss Wen assembled the gun and asked Emo to stand behind her. Emo realized that although she was fast, she hadn't noticed the people behind the screen. If these turned on them after the transaction, enemies would probably surround them. The older man called her impatiently and inspected the goods involved in the transaction. He clapped his hand, and a man entered. The older man unlocks the box and shows Miss Wen there's money in it. Miss Wen asked Emo to let them look at the goods as there was no problem with the money. Emo told them to feel free to inspect the goods. The man said that there was no problem with the goods. Miss Wen noticed something off about the old geezer's tone. A man took Miss Wen on the spot and was to pull the trigger, but Emo noticed him and blew his head. He fell while the other gunman was about to pull the trigger. Emo pushed Miss Wen, and the gunman missed the target. The older man yelled to shoot them dead. A fight started between the gunman and Emo. Emo killed the men behind the screens, and only Mr. Gong was left. Miss Wen realized that Emo wasn't an average home. He figured out the screen's mechanics in advance. If he hadn't made his move, Miss Wen would have subdued the men who had shown themselves but might have been shot dead by those behind the screens. When Mr. Gong saw that there was no way out, he told Miss Wen this was a misunderstanding and asked her to hear him out. She said that Mr. Gong would kill her over a paltry sum of one million dollars. He was going to make an excuse, but before he could do so, Miss Wen shot him. Emo asked her if they weren't going to clean the battlefield. She said that they surely were and pressed a button. The building immediately caught fire. Emo was shocked at where she was hiding all the explosives. She told him that the box containing the gun was a bomb. Emo realized the troublesome situation and thought that he might be exchanging his life for $50,000. Miss Wen asked him if he wanted to go to Gulen he should take a plane, but Emo replied that neither he had an ID nor that this was convenient for him. Miss Wen offered him to leave his ID woes to her, and this would be her gesture of being thankful to Emo for helping her. She can't give him money as money needs to go somewhere else, but to show her appreciation, she would give him the box holding the model worth quite a penny. Emo said she had already given him enough money, and now he would need an ID card. Miss Wen told him to leave this matter to her and went to prepare the documentation for him. Emo noticed her going to the police station to forge the documents. She went out and told him that it was all settled. Miss Wen said that considering his combat prowess, he would have no problem snatching the money from her, and he hadn't asked any questions from Miss Wen. She asked him if he had a cell phone. Emo told her that he prefers peace. She said it was odd to notice someone without a cell phone this age and gave him his documents. She prayed for their paths to cross again and left in her car. Cyan Shan Town was ahead, and Emo knew he was a hundred miles away from Ding Hai and now had an ID card. He realized that even if the Song family figured out Emo killed Song Shao, they would need some time to find him. He noticed a crowd in the streets of Zion Shan Town but thought stocking up for the road was best. He went to buy the smallest nails in the shop with whom he won't have to dismantle a table when things get dicey. Emo noticed a man stealing a bag from some other guys and was astonished at the courage but lack of fineness in robbing the other person. The robber was infuriated and said that he would gouge his eyes out. Emo beat the other guy, and the robber didn't notice him move. He felt the punch when it landed on his face. The members of the robber's gang came to save their boss with a knife. The boss yelled at him not to fight the guy as he wasn't normal. Emo also beat the other guy. The man who was about to be robbed noticed the strength of Emo and called him. 
Yimo asked what was wrong. He said that he was Zhuo Al Guo and thanked him. He gave Yimo his card, said that fate had brought him here, and asked him if he would lend him a hand. Yimo said that he was busy. Zhuo offered him as much as Yimo wanted if he accompanied Zhuo to Gilan. Yimo asked about his purpose in going there and liked the idea of earning money. Zhuo replied that he was going to Liash Town, nearby Gilan. The town's close to the borders of several countries and is chaotic. Zhuo said that he had the number of bodyguards, but Yimo's skills were better. Yimo accepted his offer to go to Gilan and said he wouldn't need any remuneration. Rather Zhuo would just settle his lodgings. Zhuo replied that Luish is a dangerous place to linger in. He owned a house there that Yimo could use but warned him it was a death trap. Yimo said that where there is danger, there is also opportunity. Both sat in the car, and Yimo noticed that there was not a single village in sight in the drive of two hours. Yimo seemed suspicious regarding Zhuo's business in the town, but the place was good for cultivation and escaping notice. The driver applied the emergency brakes as there was a human barrier ahead. Zhuo saw the robbers asking for money from a man and a girl. The robber said the man to leave while the girl stayed. This infuriated the man, and he took out the gun. The robbers became scared and left. Yimo asked the chauffeur about those people, and he told him they were just a bunch of outlaws known as the 13 brigands. They are up for every criminal activity in the town. If anyone refuses their order, they kill them. Yimo said that he would handle the situation. A robber came to their black car and asked them to get out, otherwise he would shoot them. Zhuo warned Yimo to be careful. Yimo got out of the car and asked what was wrong. The robber aimed at Yimo. Yimo attacked him, and he was astonished at the strength of Yimo. They fired bullets at him while Yimo managed to escape the bullets and beat the guys. The woman seemed impressed with him, and the man was also convinced of his exceptional capabilities. Zhuo exited the car, and the girl recognized him and called him his uncle. Zhuo asked her the purpose of coming to this place. Zhuo introduced her to Yimo as a reporter named Xiao Lei, a good friend of his niece Ying King. Zhuo asked why she was there as the proletariat overran this town. She replied that the tourists that came to this town had gone missing, and she was there to investigate them and was glad to meet them on the way. Zhuo told her about the danger of traveling alone and offered her to accompany him once he wrapped his business. She agreed. Zhuo received a call, and the person online broke the news that the 13 brigands waylaid manager Fang they were after their goods now. Zhuo told Yimo that merchandise had been snatched by the 13 brigands and demanded to help him. Yimo said that one of the members of the 13 brigands that attacked them was still alive and could lead the way. Yimo was confident of his strength in dealing with the remaining members of the 13 brigands. Zhuo suggested the backup, but Yimo told him he could handle them alone. They arrived in Luish town, and Zhuo told him that because of the war, the civilians had evacuated the town, and the government was not managing the area. To make things worse, the riffraff moved in, and now the area is somewhat between a town and an encampment. The injured member of the 13 brigands led them to the headquarters, where two patrolled the premises, and two guarded the south. Some members were fighting. Zio asked the driver to turn over the car to a somewhat obscure place so that she might get the best shots for the report. Yimo didn't he wants to be a part of any news, so he took a short leave from them. Zhuo warned him about the risks he might encounter there and told him that without his help, he couldn't identify the manager, Fang. Emo put on his shaded and called on the members of the 13 brigands. The members called him a son of Abich which pissed him off, and he began to fight. Emo broke the arm of the man that mocked him. The guys decided to attack at once. Emo called them all a bag of trash and started beating them. He then turned to Zhuo and asked the number of members he killed. Zhuo exclaimed with joy that he had handled eight guys. Emo said they had given themselves a somewhat powerful title but were merely weaklings. The guys inside the headquarters opened fire at Emo, but he escaped the bullets. Zhuo felt lucky to have met Emo. Then a man came out and surrendered. He said not to kill them. Emo said he and Zhuo had merchandise to reclaim and a hostage to save. Emo realized that something in the room was giving off seriously potent spiritual energy from the red boxes. There was a purple heart vine in the box. The purple heart vine was good for cultivation, and Emo was astonished to come across this after finding the silver heart herb. Zhuo made him meet manager Fang. He thanked Emo for coming to save him. The manager asked why the purple heart vine was important to Zhuo and why he risked his life. Zhuo told him that his son had some mental illness and when they turned to a traditional physician, he recommended purple heart vine as his cure. Zhuo had been finding this ever since. Yimo said that this purple heart vine was not a cure for his son, rather, this may exacerbate his condition. Zhuo was shocked to hear this from Yimo. Yimo said he had some medicine know-how and might help his son. Yimo asked if Zhuo could give the purple heart vine to him. 
Zhuo thought that if Yimou had wanted the herb, he didn't need to make an excuse as he was the strongest amongst them. But if he had offered to help his son, he would surely be capable of this. Zhuo gave him the herb and aid that he was indebted to him. Manager Fang offered them Ho's Pudao Association to continue the conversation. At the Yanjing, there was an ongoing meeting. The boss asked regarding the investigations. His members told him young Master Xiaowen had taken to Hafeng a week ago, but he secretly moved to Ninghai. The boss said that young master went there to look for Ning King and was even avoiding the surveillance cameras there. King Zhu was in Ninghai while Yimo had disappeared. The surveillance footage showed young master's car was abruptly catapulted off the road. The boss seemed worried as there was no sign of reckless driving up till the accident on Kinong Cliff. The head of the Song family named Kai Ming asked about the whereabouts of Yimo. The boss said that they had nothing about Yimo at the moment, but the data from the computer housing surveillance footage from the residency of Yimo and Ning King is recovering. Meanwhile, a man enters and tells that the data has been recovered. As they saw the footage, Kai Ming noticed Yimo's involvement in the case. Song's family seemed disturbed and said that Yimo had to pay for young master's death. They decided to investigate Ning King as she was also not on the innocent party. But Kai Ming said that his main target was Yimo, and he wanted him alive or dead. Ning was watching her as in Yimo's frame and asked if he had left without a word because he didn't feel free in the house as amidst the chaos and settling dust. Home is where the heart finds freedom. Ning blamed herself for the departure of Yimo. She began to remember the hurtful words she had ever said to him and began to cry. She wanted him to come back so she might apologize to him. The wind entered the room, and Ning noticed Yimo's favorite plant on the shelf budding. She decided to take care of the plant until Yimo came back. In Yun Bing's apartment at Ninghai, Miss Su Jing was having a bath when she remembered what Yimo had done to her. She thought that Yimo was hiding because he was ashamed of his act, but she remembered Yimo saying she was investigating the wrong person when she held him accountable for what happened to her. She remembered his Yimo when she began to regain consciousness, but she heard many voices. She took the SD card and plugged it into her laptop to find the answer. She saw Yimo telling Zheng Wen Kaio that his method of harassing Miss Su Jing was despicable. Zheng offered him money to keep his mouth shut and leave him be. She realized that it was Yimo who saved her. Why Yimo saved the life of a teacher? The teacher mistook him for the one who drugged her. Now she is trying to find Why Yimo. She wants to clear things up. She has been asking about you all over that has anyone seen him. Another teacher thinks that she heard Yunbing and Why Yimo are not on good terms, and now she seems concerned about him. Then Yunbing tells her she mistook him for another person. And now she is sorry for her behavior and wants to apologize and is searching for him. He is not at his parents' house. I am trying G to find him personally and say sorry to him. Meanwhile, CMERE brothers EHUO and brother Yi are celebrating and thankful to brother Yi as they left that situation alive just because of their brother Yi. They have been talking about the PUDAO association among the three biggest gangs in Liash. He tells that 13 brigands are evil bastards. Getting rid of them is better for everyone. He also thanks ZHUO for the black and purple route is a nice bonus. He will head to his place once he checks out Luish. Sister Zio asked Yi for his number to thank him properly, but he told him that she did not own any number, at which she was shocked that someone in this age of day has no mobile phone. Brother Fang, Yi and Zio and Zhuo have to catch a flight for Xiangxin, and they are making a move for that. Fang asks them to take care and, in case of trouble, to contact him. They say goodbye and move. Fang asked Yi if he could help him to arrange his loadings and anything he could help with. Yi tell him that he just wants to stay in some quiet place. Yi ask him how he found the purple vine, to which Fang tells him that he found that seven years ago in a Vietnam cave where he came across the corpse of a Tibetan Lama. When he found the vine in the wooden box, it looked valuable, so I took it with me, and then I buried the Lama's corpse and asked him about the location, at which Fang told him that he marked the grave. He found that the soil is suitable for farming the silver heart herb. He sowed the seed and thought about what to do meanwhile. He doubt Wang Zhu and Wen Dong are people with unseen depths. He thinks of finding that buried place. He might find something useful. Meanwhile, the soldier on the Vietnam border is healing the injured child when they find someone barbecuing. And then they find Yi. The soldiers came to Yi and asked him whether anyone had passed from there. Yi, while doing his work, said no. The soldier found Yi's tone unbearable and threatened him with his gun. He said to him he had not done anything like that. Meanwhile, someone from behind stopped the soldier and said he was the one looking for him. He told the soldier that he dislikes someone pointing a gun at his head, and in between, something happened, and the Viets were dismembered. 
someone shoots the soldier from behind, and he feels unconscious. He thinks he passed out from severe blood loss. After some time, he woke up and asked what had just happened, to which he told him he had passed some spiritual kai, so he should be good now. He offered him a roasted rabbit leg. The soldier tells Yi about his squad, and that he lost and asks Yi to help him with his powers, and in return, he will help him with anything he had been looking for in the middle of the forests. He found that a fair deal and said okay, I will help you with that. They then started heading towards the place the soldier told him about. They reach a cave, at which he asks him about what the place is. The soldier told him that it was Hanchen Cave where they had been ambushed after completing their mission. He said that the place was defensible but not suitable for offense, which is why his unit was trapped. He thought it was the same cave Fang told him about. In between this conversation, they heard gunshots at which the soldier thought his fellows were still alive. Now they were planning, and the soldier told Yi there were 20 enemies when they ambushed them and as few were after him and few they took during subsequent battles still, they would be left with 5 to 6. They might be thinking of the advantage of darkness for the attack. He told him to look at the blind spots in forests that would be safe enough. They looked and found 10 enemies, but they were all gathered in one place so it was easy to attack them. They started attacking, and enemies got in action too. He threw a smoke bomb and then moved towards enemies. He competed with two and was left with eight until the smoke cleared up, and from the other side, the enemies started firing at the black spot. He fought with enemies and found they were skilled enough than those so-called 13 brigands. He continued fighting, thought about the situation, and was doubtful whether he would survive. The soldier was worried after the bomb exploded whether his mates would be alive or not. The soldier thanks him for how he competed with them, to which he tells him that they were much more in number than he assumed and now just go and take his mates out. Meanwhile, his mates were waiting for the big brother Guo to come and save them. And at the same time, Guo Kai comes and calls for their names. They were shocked. Guo called for Wen King and Fang Wai. They waved at Guo to depict their location. Guo saw them and asked if they were okay. They told him that Wan King had suffered a minor injury and inquired about the squad that came to their rescue. He told them that there was no squad. Rather, our savior was a young martial arts expert who saved him from scumbags and single-handedly defeated them. He also told them that he transferred his spiritual Kai to him, which resulted in healing his knife wound. Fang Wai said there was hope for the wounds of Wan King. They decided to leave the cave, and Fang was determined to seek Yimo. Yimo was waiting for them outside when Guo came out and waved his hand. Fang was shocked to see Yimo as a young martial arts expert. He went to Yimo, thanked him for saving their lives, and requested him to take him as his disciple. Yimo refused, saying he was not good enough to take students and wanted to head his way as Guo, and his squad seemed fine. Guo asked him to stop and reminded him of their promise to compensate Yimo and help him find what he sought. Yimo told them he was seeking two blooms of scared lily, and they might be near the mountain. Wan King said that he knew the location of the sacred lily and could take him there, but his leg wound hindered his way. Guo was glad to hear that they could be useful for Yimo and said that after Yimo would cure her leg wound, she would tell them to the location. They lay her down so that Yimo would check her wound. The squad left Wan King in the care of Yimo while Guo and his teammate dealt with the bodies and the spoils. Yimo used his spiritual Kai to get the bullet out of her leg, but Yimo found her injury awkwardly. Wan King asked Yimo why he wasn't taking out the bullet, so Yimo said that she had to remove her pants or make a hole at the place of injury. She chose the former option. Yimo then takes the bullet out of her leg. She felt like the bullet had buried inside her wound and was slowly pushing out. Yimo said her wound was completely set, and she would move around the coming morning. She thanked him. Yimo asked why a girl like her had joined the army. She said she had an army background and had worked hard to get into the Falcon unit. She sounded disappointed with her performance as she had dragged down her team many times on the battlefield. She inscribed her number on a comb and gave this to Yimo, and led him to the Sacred Lily. She trembles while walking as her wound has not healed yet. Yimo supported her. Yimo asked her how she knew about the location of the Sacred Lily. She told him she learned about their location when hiding in the ravine as those plants differ from the normal, so she noticed them. She seemed worried as she forgot to inform Sister Lin. She told her that her wound was better and took Yimo to the location of Sacred Lilies. The captain was shocked at the cheerful voice of King. His member asked if Yimo had escorted her or if he was deceived. Fang Wai said what he looked at was real, and she took him to the Sacred Lilies. The other member was still in awe as she allowed a man to support her. Fang Wai said that Yimo had a good personality and that he had saved her. She was reserved, but now she might have found the right company. He liked them together. He then ordered him to organize the guns. As Yimo and King walked, she asked if he had been easy. Yimo replies that he likes her genuine and laid-back character. 
She was decisive with her words and actions. She told him that his presence had an unpretentious and liberating feeling and that she talked much with Yimo. He realized this girl possesses a spiritual root while spiritual kai and cultivation are practically non-existent. Yimo told her to be herself and do what pleases her. She showed him the sacred lily, which looked exactly as Fangnan had told them. Using a palm to exhume the grave might make things faster, but damage the corpse, so Yimo chose the primitive method. He found the corpse in a map. He couldn't understand its contents and wanted to find someone to understand this in the wilderness. King told him that she could read the maps that were written in Tibetan. The words on the top translated to spread out and holy door, and the Taklamekan refers to the largest desert in the country. She told him that this desert was also known as the Sea of Death in the Tarim Basin of southern Xinjiang. She was pleased to help him understand the map. Yimo asked her to rest while he would rebury the remains of Lama. Yimo sat on the rock, thinking about the location of Lake Ku and the holy gate on the parchment. The purple heart vine is a spiritual plant that was used in the initial stages of training Kai. He tried to establish a relationship between them and thought if it might be a coincidence that they were placed together. He noticed a snake behind him and had let his guard down, so he wasn't able to dodge the snake. King saved him. The snake came out again on Yimo. He threw nails at the snake. The snake slithers away. Yimo noticed that there was a poisonous aura coming from her wounds and that the snake was venomous. The squad arrived and asked what had happened to her. Yimo told them that an animal similar to the snake, called Basilic, had bitten her. He told them the characteristics of Basilic that they had legs and their eyes glow green in the dark. Besides, they are extraordinarily fast. He told them that Basilic's venom is incredibly potent than any snake's venom. The captain asked if the venom was lethal and to save King. Yimo said the poisonous aura had condensed into a black line and spread. Basilics are drawn to spiritual Kai, and the poisonous aura will slowly sap away at a person's line force, draining it to nothing, and he got bitten while protecting him. The squad was worried as there was not any hospital nearby. Yimo remembered that the basilisk was fledging as it was not fully venomous, so they had some time to save King. He remembered that some of the silver heart medicinal herb properties might be in his bloodstream so that he might save her. He cut his arm, and the captain was confused. Yimo told him that he had taken a medicine not long ago and that its effects might be in his blood which hopefully could save her. He let some blood drops fall into her mouth. She began to regain consciousness. He told her that he had done this because his blood had some medicinal properties, yet he took medicine regularly, and this was not a regular blood transfusion. She thanked him, and he went to see if any more venomous creatures were nearby, and advised her not to make such a stunt again. She said that whenever Yimo was in trouble, she would do anything for him, and he would save her every time. He said that what if he wasn't able to cure her? She said that in every situation, she would protect him in a heartbeat. He felt that the girl is developing feelings toward him. Her squad member told her that Yimo could care for himself, but what if she got into trouble? What would her friends tell her family? Yimo took leave while King insisted that she would go with him. Sister Lin told her that her injury had not healed yet, but she replied that Yimo would take care of her. Fang Wai told Sister Lin that Yimo and King were going on a date. Sister Lin appreciated Yimo's extraordinary character. Yimo asked why she had joined the army at such a young age while she must have been studying. King told him that her family was looking for a match for her, so she took refuge in the army and hadn't moved back since. She asked if Yimo had a girlfriend. He replied that he hadn't had a girlfriend but had a wife. She was in shock at hearing about his wedding and wouldn't believe her ears. He said that his wife had gone through a similar situation and wasn't ready to marry the man her family had chosen for her. That time she and Yimo weren't close. Then she proposed to him to be his fake husband. Yimo told her that he helped her by being her fake husband and could provide a similar service to her. King was stunned to hear that a girl had used him and that he was in a scam marriage. He told her she didn't use him, rather, he was looking for good karma by helping her. King realized she shouldn't discuss his personal life issues and change the topic. Yimo noticed that a basilisk had been observing them from the shadows. He realized the cunning basilisk was looking for an opportunity to attack them. He took hold of her hand and walked away. The basilisk attacked them. Yimo caught him by the neck and asked King to prick her finger with her teeth. The basilisk seemed like it was calling its companions. Yimo used his magical power on the basilisk and asked King to put blood drops on its head. Yimo called out, part the heavens, with the sun and moon aligned, no god made an eye, and used his charm on the snake. He then left the basilisk. King noticed no change in the basilisk and found it crawling toward her and climbing onto her. Yimo told her that the basilisk now recognized her as her master and would even protect her when he wouldn't around. She asked about the diet of the basilisk, and Yimo told her that they were fond of bamboo shoots, but basilisk can scavenge their food. 
Gimo said that they should be leaving now when the sun was up. The basilisk had crawled inside King's sleeve. Gimo said that she should now sew a pocket for it. Wong King is standing on a cliff, watching the sun and wondering what Big Brother Yi is up to. The caption asked what she was doing and if she was thinking about Yi. W blushed and asked the caption to stop poking her. She was thinking about the four happiest days of her life she spent with Yi. He seems cold and detached from the outside. But he is kind and sensitive and taught her many self-defense techniques before he left. On that cliff, she asked Yi when he was leaving. And he told her that her wounds were healed and he had already dallied too long over here, so he was leaving tomorrow. Then Wonking requested him to keep her number safe with him. He said he will and advised her to take care of herself. The caption told her that after they wrapped up this mission, he would talk to Hire about her long leave so she could visit Yi. She hugged the caption with excitement. They have a meeting in the house. One boy tells Nan that they do not trouble the Yuanan gang, and the Fei gang is heading towards their way, and they are on the warpath. They have to think of something. Nan asked them to calm down and said their organization has stood tall for years. They are not pushovers and are capable of fending off the Yuanan gang. He ordered Shidu to deal with other workers. He announced who wished to fight and follow him. Many agreed. Shidu continued his speech by saying that with most of the brigand assets, they are stronger than ever. The Yuanan family holdings of today can't stand to rival them, so they have no reason to fear them. One man asked Shidu if the Yuanan sent fewer people this time. Still, Fei gang members are heavily armed and with blasted brigands. They never fought in a battle as big as this. Nan said that they would treat their guests nicely. The fight would be a show of honor for the new audio association. Fang Nan and Yuan and Gan were about to start the fight. The leader of the Fang Nan group said that the Pulau Association had conquered the 13 brigands and wouldn't underestimate them. The other gang was accused of robbing the place. One of the gang members pulled the trigger. The members of others yelled at why they were firing at the residential buildings, and Liash is not a place where gangs can mess around. The boss of Fang Nan asked Tank to take care of the gang. A fight broke out between them. The gang members were cheering their fighters. The boss of Fang Nan asked his guys to get the Yuanan and Fei gangs out of Liash. Yuanan gang said that the Pudao Association is surging retreat. Fang Nan's boss said that the other gang had panicked and they were going to choose them. The referee asked them not to chase them. A net fell from above, and the guys panicked. Yuanan gang had trapped them. One of them said that the one who had conquered the 13 brigands had the surname Yi and that he had taken that away from them. He recognized one of the members of the 13 brigands and yelled at him for working with their family. He replied that he had enough food with the 13 brigands but, but since he had joined Pudao Association, he had been losing weight. He said Pudao Association was eager to expand when it had yet to gain its members' loyalty. The boy mocks Fang because he is afraid he will slaughter his champion. He thinks if anything happens to his plants and he takes umbrage, his Pudao Association won't be able to escape unscathed. And if he is in the temple, it should be fine. Then he replied that he was not worried for Yi but for his association and their two gangs. His men shouted and told Nan to get to the temple and not worry about them. One man hit Shidu from behind. Nan shouted, but he asked him to leave. They held the fort and couldn't let anything happen to Yi. Then he agreed and told Shidu to hold on and that he will be back soon. He thinks he screwed up this time as he doesn't know where Yi lived. The boy told his boss about Fang Nan is run away. He said, let him go. He is only running to his doom. Yimo is jumping into the forest. His cultivation is already stagnating. If he wants to break into the next stage, he must depend on herbs. He sees the temple on fire from above. A strong man beat Nan and said they did not catch the person who foiled their plans, and now he is here asking for thrashing. He's got to see what treasure is buried under here that Nan is protecting so fiercely. Nan replied that he forgot about that as long as he had a breath. All men start beating him. The strong man looked in the mud. He thought there was something valuable in there. Yimo land on the roof of the burning temple. He asked them to stop and said they thought to come into his house and wreck his stuff. Nan apologized to Yi that he could not protect this place. The strange man said he finally showed up and single-handedly destroyed the 13 brigands. His two men come to kill him, but with one strike, he cut them in half. People were horrified to see this. The boss ordered other his order men to thrash him and wonder what is this man made of. He killed them in seconds. Boss pants get wet. He asked him if he was the guy who stepped on his plants. He instantly apologized and said he paid all the cost of the plants, but he cut his face and killed him. Nan thanked God that he was on Yi's side, not against him. He asked Yi if those plants could be salvaged. He told him these were just normal plants. Nan was shocked at where the actual herbs were then. Shidu came running. They both hug as if they were safe and win. 
Fang Nan told Yimo that after he left, Brother Nan came into conflict with a gang in Liash, the UNN gang. In turn, the members of the UNN gang turned their backs on the martial artist's code of honor and teamed up with Fei Gang. They had also tracked down the house they had built for Yimo. Brother Nan knew that the plants in this area were important to Yimo, so he went to protect them. Yimo thanked him for protecting the plot of land. If the seeds were burnt to ashes, all of the efforts of Yimo would have gone to waste. They offered Yimo their other property where he could stay. Yimo told them that their soil was unsuitable for his plants, and he had to find a place where his plants would grow comfortably. He appreciated Fang for his loyalty and generosity. He suggested that his gang absorb the other party's assets and become the biggest gang in Liash. Fang was determined to power the structure of Liash reorganized. Yimo then left, and Fang Nan bid him farewell. Yimo felt as if the soil of this world was not suitable for cultivating silver heart herb. He wanted to return, but there needed to be a way to avoid the Song family. In Yanjing, Master Hai was discussing the hiding place of Yimo. The reporter told him they had located a closely located man to Yimo in the Gixang Dailing, a heavily forested mountain range. Master Hai wanted to see for how long Yimo could hide. Yimo's wife was waiting for him when her friend suggested she move on with her life. Mu Mei told Ning that Yimo had been hiding in a safe place, therefore, the Song family could not trace his location. But they are not willing to give up on his weight, and he would get in trouble whenever he comes back. Ning said that she must stay here to protect him on the first notice. She advised her not to. Ning insisted on waiting personally for Yimo. He appreciated him for treating her with care. Now he needed her as the Song family targeted him. She sat with her plant and said that the plant was brimming with life when Yimo was there. The plant was sprouting again, so she asked if this signaled that Yimo was coming back. Mumei wanted to go grocery shopping when some men entered and accused Ning of cheating them on their money. They said these men were associated with the Song family, but their only concern was money. One wanted to break the plant pot with a stick, but Ning saved it and got smashed. Her mouth bleed, and her friend declared the men as murderers. They got terrified as they were only ordered to scare her, so they ran away. The ambulance rushed towards the hospital. Kinks who parents are rushing towards their daughter's ward. Doctor is waiting for them. They asked about their daughter's health. Doctor told them that, according to X-Ray, their daughter suffered a large blunt force impact, resulting in a fracture in her spinal cord. Their daughter may be paralyzed and have contusions in her heart and lungs. She may not live past three years. Her mother was devastated and grabbed a doctor's coat. Doctor asked them to calm down. Her husband told the doctor he would pay whatever cost she makes her daughter fully recover. Doctor assured him he would do their best. But to this date, there has not been a single successful surgery for complete trauma spinal cord injury. Her father trembled. Why have things turned out like this? He punched the wall and swore to himself that he would not let those criminals get away with this. Her wife said she wanted to find Suzu to help avenge Kinksu. Her husband was shocked by what she said. But she said she knew that he told her that Suzu is from a secret society, so it's inconvenient for Suzu to show up. But this time, even though the Song family pulls their strings, she won't let Kingsu's pain go unpunished. Her husband agreed. Kwiksu woke up and told her mother she was hurting and she wants to go to her apartment and didn't want any surgery. Her mother said doctor would help her better if she stayed in the hospital and she was with her all the time. Kingsu shouted that she wanted to die peacefully in her apartment and passed out again. 